Bullium Lanes in Montclair here for what may or may not be the title match of today's JBT SoCal Invitational Tournament. That's because it's triple elimination match play and we got a scenario where Skyler McGowan has two losses and Solomon Salama has one loss. So Skyler has to beat Solomon twice in a row in order to snag the title away from the lefty. It's a second frame strike after a first frame spare. Meanwhile, Salama struck in his first frame. To their right is what is definitely the handicap semifinal. It's three bowlers left over there, and everybody's got two losses. So Jacob McGuff playing Bryce Nathan. The loser will be in third. The winner will play Chase Simmons for the handicap crown. Solomon simply doing Solomon things. One of the best we've ever had. I am uh, putting some exclamation points at that. After a big win yesterday, he qualified today at plus three, three something. I don't know that scorecard in front of me, but he qualified first by a mile. Made a much more challenging Roma pattern look like a, just a cakewalk. Whatever Italian food would be a more appropriate metaphor there. Just a line he's comfortable playing, an environment he's comfortable in. Any rust from COVID has long since disappeared. And that is a perfect three in a row to start out. Skyler, a tour veteran though, he's played tough customers for, gosh, better part of a decade here in JBT. Four time champ. Triple elimination match play, bowl over and over until you lose three. He lost two to Lewis Luna and then ended up eliminating Lewis later on in match play. So, good revenge here. And he tomahawks that four pin for a double to get within 10. A lot of kids love to see that big giant hook these days. Skyler wants no part of it. He is like the most down and in bowler on tour. And that is his A game. He doesn't want to cover boards. He likes a lot of ball speed and very direct through the heads. The great fundamentals and I don't care how many boards you cover up, every ball is going to strike when it hits right there. Three in a row ties up the match. So pretty. In addition to the, the physical near perfection that Solomon exhibits, he's, he's also one of the most mentally savvy bowlers of any age. Out there, extremely smart kid, but you know, super knowledgeable about the game and staying on top of adjustments. And just this total package. When he doesn't hit dead flush, he just shreds the friendly racks here at Bolium and five in a row. And so the Skylers will continue to have to play catch up. I like to play mustard. No? No? Nobody? No? I like refried beans. That's why one day I want to try fried beans because maybe they're just as good and we're wasting time. Copyright, Mitch Edward. You don't have to fry them again after all. <laughs> oh dear. Big, big thanks to Al and the whole team here at Bowling. I'm so happy to have a pretty much full scale JBT weekend in California to wrap up a very short SoCal season. Only eight tournaments, including today. So it's a bit of a sprint to the points races. Usually it's an absolute marathon. But couple bad tournaments really put you behind the eight ball this year out here. Nonetheless, top 20 advanced to TPC. So we'll see a lot of these faces you see now in about a month out in Vegas. No! Oh, a bad mistake from McGowan there as he <clears throat> comes up high in the first shot and whiffs on that spare. Not an ideal position for Skyler to be in having now half the game to come back from 33 pins behind. Bryce is giving 15 over there, and he 
see the leads right now by 16, so anybody's game over in the handicap semifinal. Much better shot from Skyler. Not much perturbs him. That's, that's about his look, whether he's on front 29 or uh, 103 in the eighth. He just as even feel as you get. There's a high five from Pop. He says, you stay in this match. You're not done yet. <laughs> There's one thing I've noticed is Solomon hard to say, but he has grown a little bit. He, he, he used to be shorter than that, even in America, yes. But as he's grown, he's increased his upper body tilt, where it's almost a crouch at the top. I, I, that's interesting. I wonder if that's to keep the same sort of feel that he had when he was a little bit shorter. I'm interested to talk to him about that sometime. But still, that beautiful follow through towards target, and then he's just it just looks like he's just warming up for league, just throwing back the shots on a you know regular Saturday morning league, not front seven in a JBT major for a thousand bucks. They're playing for one grand on top, five hundred for second. Same thing in handicap. Skyler doesn't get a strike on this ball and a strike on the next ball. He's gonna head to the lounge and <laughs> shake it off. There you go. 10 back, still in this. He's still got room for a 256. Solomon pacing 259, that means nine square strike the rest of the way. And uh, McGuff right over there has missed his third spare of this match. That's, at this point, going to be the difference. As he was in control of this match play for most of the rounds. Was the last undefeated bowler. Match play a, a cruel, cruel creature can flip-flop on you quickly. Kyle Agani was the last undefeated bowler in a scratch and all of it, he went from zero losses to three losses in a hurry. Skyler stays in, it catches that double in the seventh and eighth. Still forces Salama to stay mistake free. And so far he is as mistake free as you can get, front seven. Make that eight. top of all the other accolades, he is a fiery competitor. Don't think he doesn't want four more. And then he doesn't. He's it? Yes. He's at the point where he doesn't count anymore. Lots. Lots and lots and lots. There have been seven or eight perfect 300 games in JBT title matches. Solomon has been awful close. And he's three away this time. My goodness, it's just it's gone so quickly too. I feel like we just it's been eight minutes, but I feel like I just started the camera and I'm like, alright, practice is over. Oh yeah, Salama's got nine. Now there's very little where that Skyler can do except tip his cap. Give five hundred bucks to Vegas, maybe go put it all if he's in Vegas, go put it all in red, maybe he'll still make a thousand bucks. JBT does not advocate putting it all on red. <clears throat> Redhead. Man, a bit. Kind of a feel better round of applause for him, but man, if that fifth frame had gone better, we could be pacing 300 to 290 here. McGuff trails by 31 over there, so it's going to be Rice playing Chase for the fifth time, right? No, they've only played one. Oh, really? Okay, it was the other way around that had the multiple bowlers. Dis I know Jacob's disappointed, but that'll be a third place finish, which I think is enough to get him to bowler of the year. He was behind Kendall Malaya, who finished around ninth or tenth. And that difference should be enough to make it happen. So that's a real nice piece of good news wrapped up there, but don't tell him that right now. He's gonna go sulk for a while. I don't blame him. That, that's set up. 233 is an excellent game of bowling, but it's gonna lose by a couple.
Bryce missed a couple spares to get a loss a while ago, and I gave him some uh, sass about that, and he made most of his spares this time. And it turned out to be the difference. A excellent 232, but he ran up against an absolute freight train. And the only thing missing from the weekend is three more. Ah, oh, come on! Oh, this tournament's canceled. There, I mean, what? Now you're just like slacking. Is this kid gonna get any good one of these days? My goodness, I mean, he only had one 300 this weekend. He only won two titles this weekend. <laughs> The 279 is, you know, give or take average for him. Ah, gee whiz. Shake it off. <laughs> 276 for the title for the incredible Solomon Salama. My goodness. Is he any good? Most of the world already, of the bowling world already knows his name, but the, uh, Legend continues to grow in the meantime. We'll be back with the handicap title match between Bryce and Chase next.